Hi friends, so as you can probably tell, I am back in Toronto. Leo and I flew home yesterday. Sadly, yes, Zach is not here. We are alone, just little Leo and me, and I am sad about it. I am a sad girl. I know it's gonna be a rough day today. It is always so quiet when I come home alone. But since I know today is gonna be a little bit rough, I figured why not film like a full day of eating on a bad mental health day. I haven't done a food video on my channel in a while, but I am gonna be prioritizing my mental health, feeling good today. It's also the second day of my period and my endometriosis is kicking my ass this month. It started yesterday on the plane. Honestly, worst travel day of my entire existence. Yesterday, talk about first world problems. Maybe I'll rant about this later in the video. Don't leave me. After last week's video, my mental health video, where so many of you were commenting, now I know a lot of us are going through it. A lot of us are not having the greatest time with our mental health right now. So I just figured this is a good opportunity for me to kind of show you guys how I eat or what I eat on bad days. Leo is definitely sad to leave Zach because he loves Zach so much. His best friend in the whole world. Oh <sighs> God. Guys, I'm dying. I'm dying. I literally did not get back until 7 a.m. last night. I did not get back until 7 a.m. last night. I am seriously so exhausted. But I'm excited because I have a mystery unboxing. Before I open this box, I wanted to give Adam and Eve a very big thank you for sponsoring this video. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Adam and Eve, they are an adult website. They sell lots of sex toys, lingerie, a lube. So the first thing I see and I've pulled out is the Adam and Eve rechargeable magic massager. So this is a wand and wands have a little bit of a cult following, I would say. This one is cool because it's actually rechargeable. So most wands I've seen are like poke them to the wall, but this one is more portable. All right, so the next thing I've pulled out is this Wild Secrets Adore Panty Vibrator. So this actually has two parts, a controller and the little vibrator part. The vibrator part goes in your underwear and then you could control it using the remote. The next thing is this limited edition by Blush vibrator. It is very cool looking. I really like the psychedelic colors. And then the next thing is this BG Classic G-Spot Massager, battery operated and waterproof with five vibration patterns. The next two things, uh, the first one is Adam and Eve Lube and then also the Adam and Eve 4-in-1 Pure and Clean Foam all-purpose toy cleaner and then finally is this really cute piece of lingerie this is like a crotchless bodysuit if you liked any of these things or you're interested in going to the website and checking out what else they have they have honestly so many things you can go to www.adamandeve.com and use my code shrinks for 50% off one item with free shipping in the US and Canada First meal has arrived. I, honest to God, have never been more excited for anything in my life. So the first thing I got, the first thing I am just so excited to be eating. This has already improved my mood, knowing I'm about to consume this. It is sushi. I love sushi. So I get two types of rolls. I usually only get three rolls, but I got four today because I am so hungry. It is past four at this point. It is past 4 p.m. So this is my first meal, but I get the avocado cucumber roll and the yam roll. So I got two of each, two of each. This sushi is so freaking good. If any of you are local, if any of you live in Toronto, you need to try Jason sushi. Their avocado is the best avocado I've ever had in my life. I am a bit worried. It's 4 p.m. I'm gonna be up so late tonight. I kind of figured that because I was up till, like I said, my flight arrived at seven in the morning. It tastes so good. It is literally so good. My mind is blowing. I'm having an out of body experience. Food makes me so happy. Good food? See, my mood's already up here. My mood's already up here. And I love sushi because it's really not that bad for you. All right, guys, but I'm going to eat this. This is going to be smashed in... How long do we think? I think five minutes or less. I just got back from Chipotle, but before I do anything, it is that time of day when the sun is setting, so it is time to close Wah! the blinds. Almost ate shit. I don't want no one peeping in here when I'm in my nighties. All right, so as you saw, I got Chipotle for dinner. 
Um, I went and got it a bit early. I don't think I'm gonna eat it yet. I'm still so full from the sushi. It's like fucking. It's 8:35. It's 8:35 p.m. It's almost nine. But I figured I'd show you my Chipotle order, um, and then I'll probably eat it in like an hour or two i just get white rice both beans with extra beans mild salsa medium salsa corn salsa fajita veggies and guacamole with the bag of chips of course there it goes until i'm ready look at this stocked fridge i have a pepsi zero and a sweet tea that i'm gonna drink later delish dinner time finally i'm finally hungry it is 9.30. I have no idea when I'm gonna get to bed tonight. This is gonna be the worst jet lag I've ever had. But what can you do? Can't complain too much. I have my freaking Chipotle. But while I eat this, I am going to edit. Literally the video you're watching right now, I am editing. The only reason I'm editing this while I'm eating this is because I procrastinated until 9.30 p.m. So. It is now midnight, it's 12 a.m. I feel like I'm getting a little tired, which is good because it's technically 9 p.m. where Zach is and that's kind of like the time I'm on. So the fact that I'm tired, like we've been going to bed pretty late recently. So the fact that I'm tired is good. Hopefully I get a full night's sleep tonight. But before that, I wanna have my nighttime snack because I am sad. My happiness, food high has worn off and now it's just quiet, I'm lonely and I'm sad. So I'm going to have this peace tea Earlier in the video, I called it a sweet tea. It's a peace tea. And then as my little pick-me-up snack, I got myself some fuzzy peaches. Listen, friends, these are so good. They, I don't think you can find them in the States. There might be some States. Every state is so different. So I hate like putting the whole country into like one. These up here, peach rings down here. I probably won't eat again. After this, I'm just really not hungry um, and I obviously don't wanna like force myself to eat more, which honestly it shows a lot of growth because back in the day, if I let myself have like a eat whatever I want day, I would use it as an excuse to overeat and eat until I felt sick. I would just keep going. I could not stop myself. I'm sure a lot of you can relate. If you have had a binge eating disorder or you currently have a binge eating disorder, you guys saw my fridge earlier. So I'm not gonna be making any food this video. I'm not gonna be like cooking. Even if you're having a bad day, you don't have the will to cook. I mean, I don't have food anyway, I can't cook. But you don't have the will to cook, to, you know, eat super balanced meals. You can still find things that are relatively, relatively healthy. Not saying that you always have to eat healthy, but you know, I don't, uh, I don't wanna eat shit, just to eat shit, so. But I did wanna say, if you are interested in hearing about why my day was so shit yesterday, why my travel day was so shit, I'll put a story time at the end of the video. I initially had it before this part that I'm talking right now, because I'm editing as I go, but I, there is something I struggle with so much and I don't know why. I've tried to pinpoint it on like some sort of childhood trauma and I can't find anything to explain why I'm like this. But I struggle so much with inconveniencing people. I struggle so much like asking people for help. I don't know why. I don't know why. And I just have this overarching fear of inconveniencing people and subjecting them to things that they don't want to do. So I moved the story time to the end of the video because I was overthinking as I do with everything. I can't help it. It's like, I hate it so much. I hate it so fucking much. I get so upset about it, how much I overthink and how much I give myself anxiety and ruin my own life. But I was like, oh my God, it's a food video. They came here to watch what I'm eating. They don't wanna know my stupid fucking story time. So if you do wanna watch that, it is at the end. It is also sped up. It's sped up by 30% because again, I was like, I don't wanna make my poor viewers watch six minutes of a story time. So if you are interested in watching that, it'll be at the end. As you just saw, I went and got my coffee and it is 9 a.m. I went to bed around one, but I did not got, get to sleep until five. <laughs> I'm so jet lagged, I knew this would be the case. We'll see what type of food I get into for lunch. I already know, I already know. I've conjured it up up here. I've, I've made a decision up here. Yes, yes, yes. Don't mind my shirt. All right guys, the final meal of the video. By the way, just so we're clear, 
I never eat all my meals out. I usually eat out, if I'm being honest. Maybe once a day or once every two to three days. One, I hate cooking. And two, I live in a very densely populated area with really good food, much better food than I could ever make. So sometimes I succumb to temptation. Sometimes, daily, I decide I deserve a little treat. So I got myself some chana masala. Indian food. I love Indian food. For one, they give you so much. All of this is huge roti and then this uh, really big portion of chana masala and rice was $8. This will definitely last me two meals. So I'll probably put half in a bowl to eat and then I'll just put the rest in the fridge. Something I also really like about Indian is they use really simple ingredients. So it's just like spice, chickpeas, rice. I know it's gonna be hearty and satisfying. It's gonna fill me up, but without any tummy pain. I'm gonna put in an Instacart order and then I will probably in the future try to do just a regular full day of eating, like not exclusively eating out or eating for my feelings. <laughs> I feel like I've done a pretty good job at finding things I really like that aren't super, you know, unhealthy. I know I keep saying that. I don't think anyone's stupid, by the way. I know we can all determine what's healthy or not. I just know when I was really struggling with binge eating or even before that, when I was trying to lose weight, I really like seeing what people order out because I really only had pizza. That's all I really ordered. That's all I wanted to order. So I just wanted to show you what I typically order. When I'm not feeling good, when I just want something quick, delicious. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. So I'm gonna start trying to put away some of my shit because if I don't, I don't know if anyone can relate. If I don't do this soon, I will lose all motivation and just never do it. It will sit here for months. Literal, I'm not even joking. It'll sit here until I leave again if I don't undo this or unpack it within like the first 48 hours that I'm home. So as I unpack, oh, I could like show you some clothes. Okay, no, that's not the point. By the way, I am wearing shorts. These are period shorts, but I figured as I do this, I will tell you about my horrific travel day. So basically I had a flight from Palm Springs to Toronto with a connector in the middle, so in Calgary. My connection was in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. So we get to Calgary and we're like deep planning and we start walking. So I get up to the section and there's a girl standing there who's working and she's like, are you done or are you like get, catching a connector? And I'm like, I'm catching a connector. So she sends me on my way, I'm walking, walking, walking. And then I realize I, I've, I've arrived in like customs when I still have another plane to catch. So I'm like standing there and I'm like, my plane leaves in like 50 minutes. Like I have to get through the security shit. I have to get through these customs officers. And I'm like, are we sure I'm supposed to be here? So I go talk to the customs officer. He sends me off to this weird back room, but I'm sitting in this weight room and there's like dozens of people in here. And I'm just looking around and I'm like, I have a connector. Does everyone know I have a connector? Cause I'm so confused. I'm like, how could this be the process? Before I even get on my next flight, I have to wait through all this. Like I'm gonna miss my flight. So after I'm approved, the border agents guy, he like has to unlock the door so I can get through. So he unlocks the door and he goes, oh wait, do you have your luggage? And I was like, no, why would I have my luggage? Like I'm going on a connector flight. Like should my luggage go to the next flight to Toronto? And he goes, let me check, let me check. He brings it up on his computer and he's like, no, your luggage is here. And I'm like, wait, why? Why is my luggage here? I, I have a next flight to catch, sir. My boarding pass says I'm going to Toronto. I was like, why didn't WestJet, the airline I flew with, which by the way, never again will I fly with WestJet. WestJet, you turned me into a Karen, okay? Not in person, through email. I can't do shit in person or I'll cry. He's like, yeah, your luggage is here. It's on the carousel. And I'm like, sir, I have a connection flight in 30 minutes. How am I supposed to get my luggage on that plane? He's like, don't worry, we have special offices for this. All you're gonna do is go out this door and go to the left and that's where WestJet's gonna be. I'm like, okay, if you say so. So I'm running, I go, I turn left and then there's this terribly rude woman standing there. And I'm like, hey, I'm looking for WestJet. And she's like, they're closed. And I'm like, what do you mean they're closed? I have a flight to catch in 30 minutes and I have my fucking suitcase. So then she says, you're gonna have to go all the way over here, up the elevator, you're gonna have to turn left and then you're gonna go have to find WestJet and do it there. I'm like, okay, I literally have 30 minutes, but I'm gonna do this. Leo's getting really anxious because he can tell I'm anxious, so he starts crying. I'm getting so overstimulated that I just start like, I can feel myself, I'm about to lose it. I'm about to start bawling because I'm so stressed. I'm so overstimulated. I finally get to the WestJet where I'm supposed to be. And that lady is so nice. She was so nice, she was a young girl. She was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, please, can I get on my connector flight? I know I only have 25 minutes. I still don't even know why I'm out here. I still don't know why. I was already in there and they kicked me out. They made me come out here. I just want to be on the flight. So she calls someone on the phone. She's like, oh, you're really past the cutoff. But like, I'll call and see, I'll call and see. I'm just popping in here to give some more added context because I forgot to tell you where I am right now in this part of the story. I'm just in like the regular airport again. They kicked me out of like the inside. I'm out in like the, where everyone is before you even go through security. They're making me check in again. I am checking in again and I still have to go through security even though I was just on the plane. She calls, they ask it. They're like, no, she cannot get on this flight. Like we're already boarding, she's fucked. So she starts checking like other flights I can take. All the other directs are full. All of them are full. So the only one she could get me on 
<laughs> the only one she could get me on was another like layover. So now for me to get to Palm Springs to Toronto, which by the way, a direct is four and a half hours. It's gonna take me three flights and eight and a half hours. <laughs> flying plus all the time in the airport we're talking probably like 20 plus hours at this point so i'm feeling all defeated because i'm like okay i don't have a direct she's put me on this flight that i have two more flights it doesn't leave till 9 30 it's 6 20 so i'm like all right like i should like whatever i i have no other choice i'm gonna go through airport security again and i'm like you know what what can i do i'm trying to stay positive even though i'm so stressed overwhelmed and disgusting and sweaty by the way because i was literally booking it through the airport i'm like drenched in sweat and then what happens this is the worst part of the story <laughs> this is the part that put me over the edge that i had to call zach and i was like hysterically crying i get their security and i walk out right in front of me is the gate i was supposed to be at and they're still boarding everyone is still in line and that's my original flight they have delays they took forever to board that flight and i'm just like this was my flight and you guys said i couldn't get on it and you're all delayed i look out the window they're still loading fucking baggage they're still loading baggage why after all that after booking it through the airport after being treated like shit by everyone by everyone. I have to come and see you all just boarding on the flight I was supposed to be on. So then at 9.30, I get on my flight. The two flights I got on, I got put in the middle seat, okay? I was like, God damn it, I got the worst seats on these two flights. The first one was really short, so it was fine. The second one was like three and a half, four hours. Like literally, like I said, a direct flight is four and a half hours. Somehow I had a three and a half hour flight, a 30 minute flight, and then another three and a half hour flight. I was like, how is this even possible? Am I just flying back and forth? And that was my horrible travel story. Was it even that bad? I don't know. I really don't know if it's that bad but it was the overstimulation. It was the emotional dysregulation. It was my ADHD ruining my life again. <laughs>